Hi everyone, Jody Conrad here with Recreation and Park Services out for another stellar day. I've been getting some great sunshine here. Uh, you'll probably see the black flies around me. I've got my hat on coated in citronella trying to keep them down. But what we're going to do today is just have a look at some of the ground cover that's popping up due to this great weather. And uh, you know, over the years we've had some really great special guests in with us. Uh, folks like Lori Lacey who specializes in Nigma natural remedies and, and medicines. Um, <laughs> Francis Anderson, who's a lichenologist, who's been with us out at Card Lake teaching us about lichens, and Ann Mills, who's been uh, showing us some really cool mosses out there. So uh, I'm gonna do my best to impart what I've learned a little bit uh, from them onto you, and uh, invite you to uh, contribute what you know as well in any of the comments below. But we're just gonna have a look around and see what we can find today. Let's get rolling. And right off the bat, we find this great plant right here. This is partridge berry, um, also known as snake berry and it has a beautiful vine. Just get in close here. Uh, this actually grows as a, as a vine, a trailing vine, and it's called snake berry, I think, because if you look at that berry right there, you can see um, almost looks like a snake bit. It has two what I call belly, belly buttons. It's where the flowers actually were um, attached to the berry. So this plant actually has two flowers uh, per berry, and that's where the um, the flowers fell off of the berry, leaving those two what I call belly buttons. But it looks like a snake bite for sure. Um, also known as partridge berry, like I said, which is different than the partridge berry that Newfoundlanders may know. If you're from Newfoundland, you know of a different partridge berry for sure. Um, but traditionally, Lori Lacey uh, tells me that this was used as a, uh, a natural painkiller. So there you go, partridge berry or snake berry. Let's keep rolling. Here we have some trailing arbutus, or also known as our mayflower. Wonderful smelling flower and of course our provincial flower. Now it's still really early for some of the wildflowers that are coming up, but these ones here that you often see carpeting areas like this, and again, they're just starting to come out now. This is wild lily of the valley, also known as Canadian mayflower, uh, but it gets a nice uh, white, um, sort, of, sort of foamy looking flower to it. This might be one that we come back to in a later edition just to see how it evolves. But uh, wild lily of the valley or Canadian mayflower. Here we have some nice gold thread. That's the three lobed leaves there. That sort of looks like a clover. Uh, it's covering quite an area here, which it typically does. Here's some more down here. Um, additionally, uh, gold, gold thread was used as a, uh, in tea form as a stomach ailment remedy or even uh, sometimes used as eye drops. And things like that so let me just I want to show you why it's called gold thread I'm just gonna gently dig up a root and show you just hold on and there's the gold thread itself I've just gently pulled that back I'm gonna put it back in a second but that's the uh, the gold thread proper right there that's the root of that plant uh, very 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 bitter tasting plant if you're into that sort of thing as well I'm gonna put it back now <laughs> Here we have a pretty rough looking bunch berry plant. Now bunch berries you, you may recognize, they get uh, later in the spring, they'll get a nice cluster of white flowers in the center there, which leads to in the fall, a nice cluster of bright red berries, hence the name, hence the name bunch berries. A bunch berry is, uh, even though it's a ground cover like this, it's actually a member of the dogwood family, which is uh, typically a tree species. So they're sort of a woody, a woody shrub. Um, so an interesting plant was uh, traditionally used as a, uh, uh, a cure for pee in the bed, I think, is, is what I learned, uh, that sort of thing. So there's a few of them around here. None of them are looking great right now, but uh, give them a few weeks and they'll be, they'll be looking good. Here's one I bet you've all seen along the sides of roads, uh, often in waste areas and, and places like that. This is, uh, these are bluets, and uh, they often get overlooked because they are so small and they just look like a white blanket often. But if you get in close, you can see the blue uh, edges and the white center, and they're actually quite beautiful. This here, just along the roadside, is really, really early sweet fern. Uh, so the leaves are just coming out now. But my mother used to tell me that uh, as, a, as a little girl, she used to put sprigs of this in her pillowcase at night just to get the smell of it. And you'll know it's sweet fern from the smell of it. So you can just rub your hand along it and smell your hand. It has a wonderful, wonderful aroma. Here's another little flower that often gets overlooked because it's such a, such a subtle little bloom. These little white bells on top. Uh, this is leather leaf, often grows along the edges of lakes and, and shores in Nova Scotia. Here's a nice little plant that I actually had to, I had to look it up because I wasn't sure what it was when we first moved here. But what I'm looking at is the, uh, the smaller leaved ones right here, the nice shiny oval leaves. 
This is mountain cranberry. So not regular cranberry that we typically pick, but mountain cranberry, also known as lingonberry. So it too gets a nice, a nice berry in the fall. And here's one of my favorites. This is, uh, well, this plant goes by a bunch of different names, as do most of them. This, uh, I call it tea berry. Uh, I've also heard it called box berry. Some people call it wintergreen. Uh, but I love showing it to kids because both the leaves and the red berry that it gets tastes really, uh, really minty, uh, especially at certain times of the year. So uh, a beautiful plant. Medicinally, it was used as a, basically it's like an aspirin. It's a blood thinner. So it was used to treat uh, heart ailments. So there you have it, folks. I think the black flies have had their way with me. I'm going to head back in and do some, uh, some more office-y type work. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little exploration. Again, the key to all this is slowing down and getting in close, and you'll see some of those details that we often just cruise by in our, on our general day-to-day -day speed. So folks, please continue to explore your backyards and, uh, and pay attention. You'll never know what you're going to find. Take care.